Earlier last month, I made a video titled How Broken Were Yugi Moto's Yu-Gi-Oh! Monster Cards, and it was the third of its kind, and I think in all three videos I've had a very similar issue with at least one card. The card that we're talking about in today's video, the card that caused a tiny bit of drama in the comment section, especially once the video got a little bit bigger than I expected, was Gemini Elf. Now why does this card have some drama surrounding it? Well, for most of today's video, we're not going to talk about how good or how bad Gemini Elf is. If you want to hear more about that card specifically you can actually go check out that video which I'll link in the end card or the end screen of this video but in today's discussion I want to go through my process for selecting cards for those types of anime videos and I've done a couple videos on anime cards and a lot of them have been pretty popular with the viewers and that's really awesome except there's one big problem uh, anytime that I talk about anime effects or anime decks or anime cards like in the case of the Yugi and Kaiba videos and that's that I don't don't really watch the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. I don't really watch any anime for that matter. And while it is true that way back in the day when I was just getting started into Yu-Gi-Oh, I did watch the original anime. That was like back when I was in middle school or elementary school. So I don't really remember the plot. I don't really remember the effects and the specifics of each duel. And that really does not help me when I make these types of videos. That being said, while I do admit I don't know a lot about any of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime series, I do know a lot about the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh TCG and that's why those videos are so much fun to make. One of the most common complaints on those videos that I made about Yu-Gi and Kaiba's cards is that I spent way too much time talking about in the intro that I don't watch the anime and that's not how I'm analyzing them but I feel it's very important when you're watching those videos because I really don't know how good these cards or the cards that I talked about were in the anime and I want to make that very clear from the beginning. The whole point of those videos was sort of looking at cards that were played in these certain characters anime strategies and then analyzing which ones are actually viable in the Yu-Gi-Oh TCG the physical card game so if I do want to make a video talking about the competitive TCG impact of cards that Yugi and Kaiba use how do I get my information for which cards were actually in their decks which cards they actually played in the anime well some people out there not most people not even a lot of people but some people probably a couple hundred commenters on those anime videos really do believe that if I want to talk about the anime I have to go through and watch every single episode to even be qualified to talk about the cards and sure those comments are mostly coming from people that only read the title and watched like the first minute and then left when I said I didn't watch the anime so they don't actually understand what the video is about but I can at least conceptually see where those comments are coming from you know I'm talking about in their mind the anime so I should watch the anime but I really don't want to do that I feel that there are other ways to find find out which anime characters actually played which cards without going through and watching hundreds of hours is something that I'm not going to enjoy. So one of the ways that I find these cards, one of the ways that I do my research is through the Yu-Gi-Oh wiki. And I know the wiki can be edited by everyone. I know the wiki isn't perfect. And that's kind of where I'm going with this. So on the wiki page for any character, you can go through and look at every single card they ever played in any anime deck. And this is how I find the information for all those videos that I've done about Kaiba and Yugi and which cards they played that were competitively viable in the TCG. I just go through and manually click monsters or magic cards or trap cards and make a list on my own separately about which of those cards actually were competitively viable and then I talk about all of them in a video. Now this isn't perfect for a few reasons. Sure anyone can edit something so I guess an entry could be wrong but more often than not the entries that I've been wrong about in past videos have been and misleading not technically wrong and when that happens when something is on the wiki in a misleading way I really have no way of checking that because I haven't really had a lot of experience with the Yu-Gi-Oh anime what happens then is that someone finds my channel somehow makes it past the title and intro and doesn't realize I haven't watched the anime even though I say it a thousand times and then they leave a comment like how does this idiot think that Yugi Moto played Gemini Elf some of the cards in these decks on the wiki actually do have specific notes about maybe they were borrowed or something along those lines maybe they weren't in the deck all the time and those are really helpful for my research for example in Yugi's virtual world deck he had three copies of blue eyes white dragon but if you go over the notes it says it was borrowed from Seto Kaiba's deck now because I could read that note and because I'm not really making a video about Seto Kaiba when I was doing that research I know to not put blue eyes white dragon in the Yugi Moto video even though he borrowed them for like one episode or something along 
along those lines. So that brings us to Gemini Elf, and not only Gemini Elf, but also Morphine Jar. The main difference here is that while they both were mentioned in the same capacity, Gemini Elf was mentioned at the very beginning of the video, and Morphine Jar was at the very end, so Morphine Jar didn't get nearly as many angry commenters. But because Gemini Elf was the very first card reviewed, a lot of people that have watched the anime and are fans of the anime found that card first and were able to leave a comment about it being wrong. So what happened with both of these cards? Well, I'll put a screenshot up here of what I read when I added them to the list. So in the Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie Pyramid of Light decklist for Yugi Moto, here's all the cards it said. You can see right in there, Normal Monsters, Gemini Elf with no notes, and then later on in the Effect Monsters, Morphing Jar once again with no notes. Now when I first saw those comments, what I kept thinking is that I accidentally read that decklist from a wrong section, because if you go on those pages, you have like an anime section, you have like a manga section, and I always accidentally, usually through the editing process, realized that I took one card from like the manga deck that wasn't actually featured in the anime, so I have to take it out of the video. But then I went back and I realized, okay, that's not what happened. This was still under the Pyramid of Light movie, and that was until I read the description. Now, the description on all these different decks usually just talks about the strategy, and this one is no different except for the last sentence. So what does this say? Well, I'll screenshot it right here, but it says, in the movie, Yugi's deck adds more support for his Dark Magicians as well as a higher amount of resources devoted to summoning the God Cards. Who cares about that? I don't really know, but the second sentence says, only the cards used by Yugi in his duel were shown in the film, but the full deck list, totaling out to exactly 40 cards, was given in the novel of the film, and I understand now what I did wrong. It doesn't make any notes on the actual deck list for any of those cards that did not appear in the movie, and I realized this not only after reading that, but then when I went to appearances of Gemini Elf on another wiki page and realized that it didn't actually appear in the film at all, which, like I said, I don't really know because I watched that movie when it came out over 10 years ago and then never again. And this in lies the problem, and I feel that the wiki should have made a note for each monster in that deck list, is that many of those cards, I guess, were not featured in the movie. Now, maybe to some people, the movie doesn't even count as canon. I'm not really sure about the how people feel about that as far as the anime community goes, but at least to most people, that wasn't where the problem was. People weren't commenting, oh, Gemini Elf and Morphin Jar were from the movie, therefore they don't count. They simply said those cards did not appear in the anime at all, which at the time, for the first couple comments, I was like, okay, maybe they're wrong. Maybe someone missed an episode or something along those lines. And then for a while, I thought, okay, maybe people aren't counting the movie as canon, and I guess that makes sense. I should keep that in mind for the next video, but it wasn't until recently, just like a couple weeks ago, when I finally read that description, because I was just, I was getting so many comments comments about Gemini Elf and Morphing Jar and how Yugi didn't use them and I was like how is the wiki wrong about two cards from the exact same deck list well now I realize they weren't wrong about it they just sort of misled me an outsider researcher with the information. So that brings us to the question in the title of the video did Yugi Moto play Gemini Elf as well as Morphing Jar we can throw that one in there as well and I think the answer is kind of not clear even right now I mean what do you guys feel the answer is because sure he had it in his deck list as far as the novelization of the movie is concerned, but does that written down deck list in a novel about the movie or adapted from the movie really count as canon for the anime? I don't really know the answer to that, so hopefully you guys can help me out there. Furthermore, does the movie itself, like the actual cartoon, does that factor in as canon for the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series? Because I don't know the answer to that one and it does matter quite a bit. Because if the movie itself is never really part Part of the canon that doesn't really matter if these cards were in the movie or not in the movie and if they were just written down later on because none of it actually counts for the anime which is what those videos were about and then some people might say myself included even that it doesn't really matter right I mean when it comes down to it those videos are more for fun they're more to appeal to older school fans and yes I am talking about the anime a little bit but does something really that small matter in the overall picture of that video did it really offend that many people that they couldn't enjoy the discussion and it's like I don't really know if something that small matters in the grand scheme of things I know to some people it matters a lot and when I do the real competitive discussions I want to be as accurate as possible but it can be really really hard and difficult to make those videos if any of the information on the wiki is even just a little bit wrong or a little bit misleading because I just can't catch that stuff because of my inexperience with the 
anime. And I'm sure plenty of people this far into the video, or maybe even five minutes ago, have already left comments saying, well, who really cares about any of this? Just get to the point. And that's kind of why I made this video in the first place. Gemini Elf, and whether or not Yugi played it or not, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. However, this is why my intros, like the first minute to three minutes of every single video, are so, so ridiculously specific. Sometimes people complain about it, but I think most people are okay with it. They know it's my style, but this kind of stuff is why I say so many times over and over again, I don't watch the anime. I haven't watched the anime in years. Please don't expect me to be super knowledgeable about it. And I know in the past, you know, when I set up criteria for the cards I'm analyzing, people say, well, none of this really matters. Just start talking about the cards. And it's like, this is why I try not to do that. I try to cover all of my possible bases because I have to read all these comments about Gemini Elf and Morphing Jar. And while I don't stay up at night thinking about these Gemini Elf comments, oh no, what will happen to me if people think I haven't watched the anime and miss something in the video, they do sort of get to me when I see a bunch of them in a row instead of the comments about the actual video. Sure, that matters a little bit, I guess, but mostly it doesn't affect the general discussion of that video. So that's kind of why I made this video, just to give me a little bit of slack when I'm making those anime discussions because I haven't watched the anime and I've already said that a hundred times. I know the comment section of this video will probably just be memed, but I really want to keep doing those anime character discussions because I think most of you guys really enjoy it, even if I'm not super knowledgeable about the anime. Sure, I'll get a couple negative comments and most of them are pretty tame, but I just want to say in this video that I want to do more of those. I want to talk about Joey, perhaps. That was like a really highly requested one. And yes, I might get a card or two wrong based on the information that I have, and that's just going to happen. It's almost unavoidable unless I watch the entire anime myself. I'll try the next time to double and triple check every single card, even more so than I was already doing. But if I get one of the cards wrong with a technicality like I did with Gemini Elf or with Morphine Jar, please just try to cut me a little tiny bit of slack and just try to enjoy the rest of the discussion. Anyway, though, I probably rambled on way too long. I'm sure a lot of people will complain about this video and not really saying anything, but I just want to kind of go over my research process for those anime videos. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's discussion video or whatever video, my rambling video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.